Okay, uh, first question. When did you start? Is, when did you start getting into like you're you're you know obviously DJ. Mm -hmm. You've been on radio. Yep. You do clubs. Uh, you open for bands, even a few major bands yeah. already. When did you first? I always start with history. When did you first start? You know, as far as realizing that you you love music and everything. Um. <clears throat> Well, I'll be honest with you. Um, I grew up in a family that was very musically inclined. It's funny, I was just talking with my wife about this just yesterday. Um, you know, it all started with me. I, my, my love for music, I mean, you can even tell the baby pictures of me. It's funny, but my, I have a baby picture of me when I was like three years old with a Kiss guitar. <laughs> I used to love Kiss. I still do. I still wear the makeup. I used to go to the concerts and everything. Yep. Uh, a lot of people, you're going to find out a lot about me, and you're going to be like, wow, it's crazy. But um, That's what makes it good. Anybody yeah. who's in music, though, the, yeah, yeah. That's, what makes it real, yeah. that's what makes it good for them, though. Yeah, I'm very musically inclined. I mean, what it comes down to is, like, I grew up in so many different genres with, you know, my family's Ecuadorian, and um, we live in Manhattan. And um, the, uh, you know, music-wise, my parents used to throw these parties. Uh, once a, Like, one, one weekend out of the month, they would throw a party. We'd open the windows up, we'd look on the first floor, and we would invite neighbors over and stuff, and it would be like a lot of like salsa, cumbia, merengue, stuff like that. Um, a lot of native music from Ecuador and stuff that we'd be playing. But I love that music, man. It was like, it was just so like, you know, it kept the party live, you know, whatever. Um, and at that time, it was just about the music, like how, how awesome it was that it opened everybody up. Like we would, you know, during the day, it'd be such a bad day. And then all of a sudden that party came through and that music dropped. It's like everybody's worries were gone, and everybody just had fun, and I, that was like the biggest thing for me. Seeing that, I was like, wow, you know, like, I can't believe like music could do that for someone, you know what I mean? Just just like your worries are gone so quick. Yeah, it's like one, one, eight, one eight, literally yeah. stop you on time and 180 you, basically. Yeah, it's, and, and it's, it's really cool, you know, so, and I mean, later on, you know, I use that to my advantage when I DJ and stuff, but, um, but then it was crazy, because then, then I had, you know, that I had that influence, with the Latin side of my family, like with the Latin music and everything. But then I had my brother, my two brothers, I had two, my two brothers, uh, Savior and George. Um, Savior was a major like house, like Chicago, New York house head, because he would go to the clubs. And at the same time, he was, he was into hip hop. So like, that's like my hip hop area. Then there was my other brother, George, he was older. He was more about like, um, he listened to a lot of new wave, and um, they, that that became popular in the mid '80s. Yeah, yeah. So, and it was like, so what was crazy was I, you know, I hung out with both of my brothers. So my brother George, when I hang out with him, I listen to a lot of new wave, like you know, New Order, you know, Old Laura Branigan, stuff like that. Like, and I loved that stuff. I was all about it, Joy Division, anything like that. Cool. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. I love the music, the beat, the rhythm, everything. And then when I hung out my other brother, Savior, that's when I got into the whole, like, you know, house and, like, freestyle music and stuff like that. Trance, stuff and like then, that. And then it was like, but then it was like, hip-hop then came, like, it made a pivotal role, huge pivotal role in my life. Um, the first hip-hop album I heard, uh, actually there was two of them. It was Big Daddy Kane, and uh, it's, a, it's a job for a big, it's a job for a big, um, what is it, it's called God. What's the second album? <laughs> and, uh, and the De La Soul's first album, Three Feet High and Rising, which to this day I always say that's like the album that influenced me so much. And um, because it was for the first time um, that, you know, like hip hop back then was just all the hard beats, you know, yep. drums and stuff, Run DMC, stuff like that. I liked it, but I wasn't really too much into it. Like it was, it was like, oh, that's cool, you know what I mean? It was, it was kind of, it was, had, a, had a rock influence yeah. back then. But then when you heard De La Soul and how they sampled music in their songs, and it was stuff that I knew, you know, when I heard Say No Go, which was like Daryl Hall and John Oates, I can't go for that. It was like, I know that song. Oh, now they're, they're rhyming over it? Like, that's hot. And that made me look at music in such a different way. And and then I just stuck with hip hop. Like, I picked it as my main thing. And um, later on in life, I actually became a, I became a rapper. I was a rapper for a couple of years. Um, you know, and, and when it was weird because it was like I started my rapping when I was in New York, but then I moved out here to Pennsylvania in '92. Okay. And I thought my music career was done. <laughs> like I was like, 
You know, because imagine I'm moving from Manhattan oh. yeah. to Emmaus, and it's like you know you got this like huge transition. And um, that's an understatement. <laughs> so, but when I moved out here and stuff, uh, it was really it was pretty wild. Like, you know, I moved out here and. I, I quickly got to find out when I went to my first day of school that a block away from me lived my uh, lived who would later on be my DJ, and he was from the Bronx, and his name was Nick, and uh, me and him we started doing going to house parties, and I would rock the mic while he would DJ, and it was crazy. And then word got around about me, then there was these two guys from Parkland that were making music, hip hop music, and I got with them. And then that's how we teamed up and we called ourselves uh, Stick Figures. Okay. And, um, and then next thing you know, like, um, you know, we started, uh, like, all of us three together started making a lot of noise. And then there was, then we started finding out that there was an actual scene, like an actual hip hop scene in the area. Just, it stuff. was probably just underground at the yeah. time. Yeah. So, and then, we, you know, we got to become friends. I mean, obviously, my friend Vill- Villain and stuff and everything, there was, um, you know, there was Red Army. Red Army was the, the one one crew. Um, then there was Lockjaw, which was another crew. And it was just, it was pretty wild. Like, you know, we got into that fold. And all of a sudden, we came to find out there was like a huge actual hip-hop, you know, kind yeah. of little mecca in Allentown. And we yeah. were like, wow, this is cool. Then, we, you know, in Bethlehem at Five Points, there was MCs like Casper and all them. And they were, they were rhyming too. And they would join us and stuff. And then it would just be at different parties. You would just rock. And everything and rhyme and stuff so it was pretty cool like i grew up in that and then when we started you know we um then there was a, a hip-hop store that opened called the underground set okay and shout out to my man express that was, they used to be on eighth and hamilton and uh um, i think i remember them yeah and then he he uh had a hip-hop shop i worked for him eventually in that and uh um, there it was like that was hip-hop mecca for us it was like if you wanted clothing, if you wanted records for DJs, if you wanted mixtapes, you know, you wanted anything, mm-hmm. anything hip hop. That's where you went to the underground set, and it was mad cool. Like we all hung out there. That's where a lot of us, you know, got our first breaks. That's where we sold our first, you know, I sold my first maxi single there. You know, they would they would definitely support local hip hop. Yeah. You know, we made mixtapes, whatever. They would sell it for us, and it was so cool. Like you know, we had that that like that platform for us. Which and really doesn't... That, that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. exist anymore, but... So, the, so no. the whole thing is like, you know, you know, that was our advantage in there. And, um, you know, so like growing up, like that's how I grew up musically. Like it was just like, you know, transitioning from like Manhattan to Emmaus. I was a hip hop head. And then I moved out here. You know, out here is where I think I grew mostly than getting into like a lot of genres. Like that was around the pivotal era of like... <coughs> excuse me. That was around the pivotal era of like, uh, like grunge music was happening, stuff like that. I feel obviously the temporary the- death of rock. Yes, <laughs> I remember very, I remember so very it was, well. It was, it was pretty wild, but like you know, like STP and like you know Pearl Jam and all of them were really popular yeah. then and stuff and everything. And it was just like Nirvana, and um, and that was a good, a good friend of mine. His name's Keeb. I will definitely give him a shout out because he he was so. I, I still tell him like you know I actually I, I haven't told him I want to he'll, if he sees this he'll find out now that he was also a pivotal uh, person in, in my life a very crucial person in my life because he was so into music another another style of music that I got into because of him and it was like I would have never known about grunge or anything like that if it wasn't for him. I also would have known about a lot of classic rock if it wasn't for him. He's a big Pink Floyd fan. Okay. So he got me into like I knew all I knew about Pink Floyd was the wall. That's right. all I knew. That's all a lot of people. Yeah. So through him, I got to know Dark Side of the Moon. I got to know like their first albums, you know. Mm-hmm. I got to know like I you know, that Roger Waters left and made his own solo, like and it was just like, man, like I never thought I would get into this, but because of him, I did, and I, I'm glad for that. And then you, you also incorporated that into because your. Inco- we incorporated all that. You know, we were diggers, we were crate diggers. So we would, when we were making beats, we would be looking through. You know, we would go to like Merchant Square Mall, which is still up, thank God. Yeah. And it's like you go the there, flea, hit the flea markets <laughs> yeah. in places like the, yep. the Fairgrounds Farmers Market. Yeah, and we would hit there for records, looking for records to make beats off of and stuff. And then a lot of that library. You know what I mean? It's yeah. full of just, you know, a lot of a lot of old records from that. You get a lot of samples from old school records like that. 
And um, that's what I love about hip hop in general, like what it did for, well, I don't know if it does it for the kids now, but when I was at that age and when we were digging for beats and stuff, it made me appreciate now everything musically. You know what I mean? Like I could sit down now, like today I was going through like my whole catalog of, of, of albums that I had and I was putting them in order and stuff. You know, and inside of that, I had like, you know, I can just imagine. Yeah, you could just imagine what I had, but <laughs> it was just like, you know, like, you know, in between like, you know, my De La Soul collection and my, my common collection, I have like all of Barry White's collection. I have all of the Doors collection. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have, so it's kind of like you could see, like, you know, people look at my library sometimes and be like, what are you listening to? But that's what I like, man. Like, you know, if, you, if you're not, you can't just put yourself in one. You know, you pigeonhole yourself into one little genre, and that's it. Right. You know what I mean? If you're if you're about music, you're gonna you're gonna learn to love everything. You know what I mean? Or at mean? least at least like it and uh, start like, understand a little understand bit about it. it or appreciate it. Right. You know what I mean? You don't have to be a fan of it, but at least know what it's about before you say something about it. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. what I, that's that's what I usually do. You know what I mean? And and especially being a DJ, uh, getting into DJing. Well, that this is a whole story, but you know, let's let's back up a bit. So. That's how I got, can't appreciate all the different types of music. And like, I, that's how I got into music, period. Like, it was all about hip hop led me there, but hip hop also took me to different genres. It opened up a lot. That of was doors. basically the main road, which also led you off to the side, to yeah. the branches and the sides. Yeah, and I'm glad for that because I have like, such an ear now. You know what I mean? Like, you know, oh, I could tell from that. I, yeah. I could tell from when I, you know, like I said, at the show at the Wanted. Yeah. Here I am, you know, it's our. My style is I try to place people at an event. So even if I can't get up real close, why? You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody else is doing that. So I'm sitting in the back of the general mission section with this crowd of teenagers and 20-somethings. All of a sudden, you, you, know, you start, and I was like, no offense, but I'm like, okay, great, let's get the DJ over with. And all of a sudden, I see how the crowd reacted to you, and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm standing on I me mean, by jaw a little, you know, one of the times in my jaw, and I'm yeah. standing with this look on my face like, huh? So yeah, it just you know, and what you were saying about the variety and every you you know, that was one time the first time I actually saw you where you proved that even to me because you would go from you know something totally hip hop and all of a sudden next thing I know I would hear you know I may hear something like like you said you know Thou Hall Hall notes or something and you go into maybe like a little country or something you know. So yeah, it just you you easily proved that every time you DJ. Yeah, and it's and that's a big thing with me like it's it's about. You know, for me, open format is they, that, that's the kind of DJ that I am. I'm very open format, and it's because you know, especially in this area, we're in an area where you kind of like really got to please everyone. Yeah, that's within your room, and it's just like you can't just play like hip hop all night long. You can't play just Latin music all night long. You know what I mean? Some people, even if they are a fan of that, they're gonna get tired a little bit of it. And, and all of a sudden it becomes okay yeah. we don't care if it's a yeah. throw on the jukebox we're, yeah. we're back to our drinks and talking in the yeah, phones exactly so the thing is it's like you got to keep them entertained you got to keep the crowd going no matter what you know and you got to le learn how to transition it beautifully you know what i mean that's a big thing for me like i never focused more on the scratching part of djing i always focused on the blending and what what would what, what makes sense you know what I mean? There's times when I, even I, it's kind of like when I'm DJing, I'm like, ooh, I don't know mm -hmm. if I, I don't know, you know what I mean? But I you picked it off, chances <laughs> are nobody else did. Yeah. <laughs> or if they did, oh, wow, that's cool. That's yeah, something new. I'm a big critic of myself, and then I'm, you know, it's, and it's funny because I can't even go to a club anymore because I'm like, you know, my ear is so trained now that I'm like, if I hear anything, I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> well, even like, or not, <laughs> even though I'm, you know, I've never done that side, you know, uh, you know, I actually seriously DJed and learned it. But because, like, with the live music, oh, I, I understand because I can pick off my, you know, at least eight times out of ten when the DJ screws up. Yeah. It's like, you know. It's pretty wild, that, you know, that, that ear. You know, my wife hates me for that. Sometimes he goes somewhere and she's like, <laughs> she's like, come on. Yeah, I just want to enjoy this. Can you just, but it's like, with you, you know, with you, it's, it's just an instinct to do that. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, if you're good, man, definitely I'll give you props and, I'll definitely be like, oh yeah, no doubt. And I have, I'll have a good time. But sometimes, you know, there's some people that I'm like, Ooh, I don't know. About that. <laughs> but, well, um, how did you, uh, you know, you, you mentioned how, you know, we just talked about how everything, how it started. Okay, how did it evolve from, like you said, back in the days of, you know, doing the crate digging stuff like that, to, you know, and you know, realizing, hey, look, this is this is all going to sound, you know, let's try this, let's try this. How did it evolve from that point to basically kind of like 
you know, how you, where you really got to be started, you know, getting the feedback, like your first club gig, your first, you know, serious club gig. Well, hey, we like, well, damn, you're good. You're not for lack of better yeah, term. I'm one of those people, you know, oh, man, you know, it, it's wild because I was a rapper my whole life. I thought I was going to be a rapper for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? Like, um, me and my crew are very, like, we, very talented, but we were also very lucky. Um, you know, um, my crew won a rap contest. Uh, we ended up opening for the Fugees because of that. Wow. Um, it is impressive. I became friends with a DJ. Shout out to DJ Leon. Um, you know, I, I, he uh, actually brought me on tour. So I toured with him in a couple of dates and stuff. Uh, we opened for him in a couple of dates. Um, you know, we were working on music then and stuff and everything. Uh, obviously, you know, we never signed with the Fugees or anything. But I learned a lot because of them. Um, you know, I learned, you know, the DJ side because of Leon. I actually, I'll be honest with you, people like White Clef, like really kind of showed me how to perform. Okay. Like I studied him and I mean, trust me, like if you want to talk about a, a hip hop show slash like rock concert, like yeah. the Fugees are the best at it. Now, you know, second to the Roots, you know what I'm saying? And I, I actually, I think the Roots are a little to them but the Fugees were just ridiculous the energy was live and you know White Clef there was a time when me and even me and White Clef uh, we were on stage together alone and um, you know he was asking me because he knew who I was and he was just like you know what you know what are you trying to do with your music and stuff and I was telling him and he said you know he said the biggest thing is you know what no matter what you do he's like you've got to learn how to captivate that crowd and he's like you don't got that crowd you're done and you know and that's why Regardless of me being a rapper or a DJ or whatever, I know that it's all about crowd control. And like, no matter what I'm doing, you know what I mean? Even yeah. If give, even if you're giving a speech, you know, whatever, you have to have, you got to get that crowd immediately. You have to have all eyes on yeah. you, not on their phones now. Exactly. And the thing is, it's like, and that's how it was. So big shout out to them because I learned a lot from them. And then, um, you know, through all the music and everything, blah, blah. What ended, up, what ended up happening was at the underground set, I uh, started, uh, they had two turntables. They had a, actually a DJ booth there with two okay. turntables and a mixer set up. And uh, what I would do sometimes, because it would, you know, it's like an eight hour shift. Sometimes it'd be boring, whatever. But um, I would go grab records. I grab some records off the shelves and then I would just start, you know, kind of playing around with them, like learning how to mix and stuff. Mm -hmm. On my own, I kind of like self-taught myself. Yeah. Boy, DJ Rec, who has also worked with me, he showed me a lot of stuff, and I was just like, "Oh, I know how to do this, like how to blend and, and throw in." But even then, in there, some people to this day, some people that used to go to the set and shop that were that are DJs now or were coming up, they were like, "Yo, we knew there was something about you because you would be the only dude I would hear." mix in like a hip hop record with a Michael Jackson record. It would be like, yo, what the hell? Yeah. How did you know what I mean? Like nobody was thinking about doing that. And me, I was I was about it. I was yeah. like, that sounds hot though. Like I know how to you know, that would sound dope with that. Yeah. So you know, I stuck with that. I stuck with that aesthetic. I was like, I, I like the way that flows. I like the, I like that I could put this in here to this mm -hmm. and whatever. I wasn't hearing many Almost DJs. like break the rules of the formula yeah. at the standard formula. Yeah, because at the time. everybody was just either a hip hop DJ or a house DJ or a trans DJ or, a, or yeah. a jungle DJ. And I was just like, well, I love hip hop, so I'm definitely spending a lot of hip hop records. But, you know, these, these came from samples. And there's, you know, especially yeah. like around the time when Puffy was out. And he was doing all his songs. All his songs had a lot of 80s music in it. Yeah. So why not throw the original sample in it? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, on to get out of it. You know what I mean? That'd be hot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, educate some people on it. And that's my big thing, too. I was like, yo, it's all about education. I still do it to this day. There's some, some, I got the original songs that they sample from, and I throw them at first because they sound really cool. And you can throw in the, the song that, that sampled it afterwards, and it's a hit. Yeah. You know, people be like, oh, okay, now I know it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. usually, like, what a, a, a transition I use usually is um, I uh, what do you call it? Black Cow from uh, uh, Steely Dan. Okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it's uh, Uptown Baby is the song that sampled that song. Right. And it's a huge club hit. So it's like if you throw in, you know, and then in the morning, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden you're like, Uptown Baby, Uptown. And then it's like, oh, like everybody hey, gets into if it. If Neil Diamond's Sweet Caroline. <laughs> 
2010, Pig Pen was the first time I actually went. And I'm like, I know that. And I'm like, and I see the young crowd, like, just going. And I'm like, God, I'm, I'm like, literally disbelief. If that can be, make. <laughs> that can do anything. Yeah. See, it's like, those are like anthems and stuff. Those yeah. are like straight up anthems. But you, it's still, you know, if, yeah, if something, if a song yeah. like that, you know, if you can blend something, you know, something like that and people love it, oh, yeah. Yeah, so. It's, it's still amazing how, like, you, you know, even whether you play a full song or a sample, the 80s, how, like, the younger generations just go nuts over it. It's like, it's new music to me. And we're looking at like, huh? Well, like, for them, it's like some of them are, are kind of picking up on it. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, I know, you know. You know better than anybody from, you know, as a DJ, as a DJ in a club, you know, watching the reaction. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it, it surprised me, though, because at that point I was like, why are these people liking, like, these old songs? But I was like, cool, because I like them, and if I could throw them into the mix, that's fine with me. You know what I mean? Kind of open for me. And then um, when I witnessed what I actually loved to do was when I saw um, DJ AM, rest the peace, the DJ AM, but he was an open format DJ. And that's what he would do in his mixes. Okay. He would he would be playing like you know he could be playing like a Public Enemy record, and then he would like go right into like an ACDC record, and then just be like and then come out of an ACDC record into like you know something by like Tribe Called Quest, and you're just like whoa, like how what? Like, yeah. how does that make sense? But it worked, and I was like, wow, okay. And and that was the cool thing, was, like, finally somebody to, like, to take risks and to be, like, and, and make it sound hot. And I was like, word, that's what's up. Yeah. I love that. So with that is how I kind of started training myself. And um, then the DJ part came kind of funny. This is a funny story. I'll tell you this right now. This is hilarious. So I was known as a rapper. And at that time, I actually had a show on LVR okay. uh, called Hip Hop 101. And LVR is... Uh, 91.3. Okay, that's college radio, Yeah, right? college radio. So I was doing community. Okay. And um, so, yeah, shout out to AJ Fritz. <laughs> so <laughs> I got to give him a shout out all the time. But, um, yeah, he put me on and stuff, and I got my show, Hip Hop 101. And it was a huge show. Like, I gave a lot of rappers around here their first time hearing themselves on radio. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, yo, come on, give me all your music. I'm gonna throw it on radio. College radio. That's one yeah. thing that's great about college yeah, radio. It's awesome. So it was just like I used to play all that, blah blah blah. blah. And then, so I had three hour shows. So my first hour, I would make sure it was all, it was all new stuff. Right. Second hour would be like all commercial stuff. The third hour was all old school. So, and and. It was crazy, but people tuned in, and, people, and I, it was you know I was just playing music that I liked, you know what I mean, just being like yeah, you know, and I really like it, you know what I mean, have fun with it. Mm-hmm. And but then it was weird, like some people would come to me like, yo man, you kill it on the radio, da da da, and I'm like, I'm like yeah, that's cool, that's what's up. I'm glad you like the show, you know. But then people started saying, yo man, you DJ good, and I'm like, I DJ good? What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm just playing song after song. Like, I'm not mixing or anything. And, um, and then all of a sudden, I got a phone call from Banana Joe's. And um, they were like, yo, we want to have a meeting with you. And I was like, for what? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, oh, okay. And um, so Banana Joe's I had a meeting with them. And they, and they were like, look, we like two of the managers there at the time, um, they, they love my hip hop show. They listen to it all the time. And they were like, you know, hey, we love the way you put the music together there. Mm-hmm. Would you want to be want to DJ here? And I'm like, huh? Uh, You're talking to me, right? I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, and you know, when somebody would always approach me about a DJ gig, I'd always be like, quick to be like, oh, I have a friend who DJs. You know, I'll call him. Yeah. So, but at that time, I was, I was kind of like working a dead end job. I needed some money, and it was funny because like they were just like. You know, there's a bad, you know, the, the, remember the, did you ever go to Banana Joe's? I remember, yeah. Okay, so there was the back room. Yep. All right. They called it like Dead Man's Land because <laughs> mm-hmm. like, nobody would go in there. So they were like, hey, there's the back room. We're trying to get it built up, you know, trying to pack that place because the, the, the bar's in there. We finally fixed up the bar, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, cool. And I was like, so you want me to play what? They're like, well, play like your old school hip hop mixes and stuff. And I was like, all right, cool. But and then I was kind of just like going along with this, and I'm and I'm thinking to myself, you know, what should I do? Like, I mean, I'm 
maybe I should just tell them that I have a friend. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So <laughs> change my mind completely was when they go, and you know we'll start you off at two fifty a night. And I'm like, wait, what did you just say? <laughs> They're like two hundred fifty a night. And I was like, seriously? They're like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I think I might take this one. You know what? Let me. Uh, what what equipment do you have up there? <laughs> so. <laughs> So they took me upstairs, showed me the equipment, and I was familiar with it mm -hmm. because I actually um, helped a mobile DJ out for okay. like a good four months on, you know, doing weddings and yeah. stuff. And uh, I kind of got familiar with it. It was the little rotary, you know, CD players and stuff and everything. And I was yep. like, oh, well, can I have like a day with this so I can get familiar? And they're like, sure, come in tomorrow, you know, you can play all day with it. I was like, all right, cool. So I went the next day with my CDs. And I started learning how to beat match him real quick on it. And I was like, all right, cool. And I was like, so we start tonight. They're like, yeah. That night started at 10 o'clock. And that I had the I had that room so packed. There was a line coming out of it. Oh, shit. And I was like, are you serious? Like, they were so ecstatic. And obviously, the DJ on the main floor was pissed. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I was taking all these people away from him. But it was like, I can't believe this is happening. And that and that room just became like the spot, especially for dancers, because like I was playing like hip hop and stuff that like yeah. I dance to and like have a good time to. Back then, you know, hip hop music was all about dancing. It was like had a good ass beat to it. Okay, we gotta just give me. More